What's up, man? What's up, dude? Look at all the chat. Yeah. How you guys right? doing? Good. How's it going, man? Marlena, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is awesome. Yeah. Love it. Hey, what's up, guys? Dimitri here. Today we're in lovely but cold Detroit, Michigan. Sitting here with a friend of mine, Eric Rina, arguably one of the most successful roofers in the area. Bam. Hey, what's man? up? How's it going, Thank buddy? you so much for having us. Thanks for coming out. So we're going to do a short interview and uh, I really want to dig in into his business and his personality. You probably have seen his YouTube channel. He have not posted one video <laughs> for entire year. We're going to start with that and hopefully he'll resume uh, producing content for you guys because the roofing industry need good guys and good content. So let's start with a simple question. How did you get in the freaking crazy roofing industry? I was just offered some time in summer between uh, school to carry some shingles up a ladder for cash. How old were you? Um, 18. 18? 18. 18. So how much was it paying back then? Uh, well, that day it paid $15 an hour to carry yeah. shingles up a ladder. Okay. What was the going rate like for a day? Or it was like 11 to $12 an hour for labor back okay. then. Yeah. Did you take the job and start, like, was it? introduction and you yeah. could not get out or yeah i just money? yeah i just started it was good money it was and it was fast paced you're outside every day with a good group of guys hanging out so fast forward two years from that point forward what was the next steps uh, i was second guy in line you know laying shingles directing the crew learning the process uh getting everything to go smoothly handling customers dealing with day-to-day -day operations and kind of just came up from there just kept learning and growing what was and the next step in your career my boss actually moved, the crew leader actually moved away, and then the business owner asked me to take over the spot, and I became a subcontractor. So this is going to be very interesting because guys who have installer's background run their businesses very differently from guys who start in sales or marketing or administration, so it's going to be a very interesting talk. So what happened next? How did you end up uh, going on your own? So I was subbing, I mean, running two crews, and I wanted to work for the best because I wanted to learn the system. So I would seek out the best companies with the highest reviews and the highest, you know, integrity and learn from the, be mentored from the business owners. And then eventually I would just make it to, you know, I knew the end goal was to open my own business and okay. filtered, you know, slowly but surely. What's your process? Guide me through your process. Like people call you uh, originally and schedule appointment what's happened next so you have somebody here answering yeah. phone calls right so she'll answer the phone call she'll log it into our calendars our calendars are synced how many three. sales do you have it'll be me and two others okay so we will so we'll between just, three guys you did five million dollars well i do and i do 80 percent of the sales i mean i do i grind so, it out so i'll do six to seven a day oh, all six to seven appointments day. right i grind it out so set does all the insurance so you'll then, do three million a year just in sales oh at least yeah easy and then John does all the repairs and then a lot of like any overflow that I have as far as- Do you that. have production manager? No, I do it. Well, me and Nick do it. So yes, it, it's kind of split up. Like it's weird. If I took you around and show you everything, you'd be like, how do you do all this? And it's just, okay. it's normal to me. Okay. You know, like my stuff's all ran by human and I kind of just interact with each person every single morning. And then I set up all the jobs. I put in all the deliveries. I schedule the dumpsters. The guys will schedule the pickups. Uh, um, you are me three years ago. That's yeah, exactly I mean, that's, what I, this is what I do, you know, so I mean, I'm no wonder you don't have time for YouTube videos. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what happens next? Okay. So she puts it in her calendar. Um, she'll schedule it. She'll always ask, you know, you know, the normal questions. How did you hear from us? Email address puts everything into the calendar. It will be sent to us and then everything syncs. I'll show up to the job or John or Seth. Um, we'll do our deal, leave them with something and then we'll start following up within a week. Okay. And then it moves to scheduling. Once they say go, we'll send them a final contract. Do you have CRM? Nope. Everything's done by human. That's the other thing. Everything's human. We tried two or three of them and it's just, it's all done by human. Every interaction is her so emailing. So what do you do? Like text messaging, emailing? Yeah, email. Pretty much through email. Everything's done text message. I give every customer my personal phone number. If you ever need anything throughout time, you can always call me, text me. What year did you actually went on your own and start your own company? Paramount, was, Paramount was registered January of 2013. Okay. Um, so that was when the name was made, the domain was bought. And so then, what it leaves is you've been uh, working for someone else for like eight years, nine years? Right. Uh, how was your first year? It was good. So we, I had so much experience from running another company with, uh, from the material um, delivery guys to the representatives from CertainTeed and the other manufacturers. I already had my own crew. 
I knew a lot of insurance restoration companies and people that were buying and flipping houses coming out of the recession. Um, so I got linked up with some, I call them whales, you know, you get linked up with a whale and they'll kind of carry you. So I was able to keep myself busy. You know, at first you only have enough work to do on the weekends. Sure. So what I did was I literally installed, I subbed contract. I installed all day. I went to McDonald's or whatever closest place. I literally like washed up in the sink <laughs> and then put on different clothes and did sales appointments from six o'clock at night till whenever, you know, as long as I had to do. To get your jobs. To get, to get my jobs. And then it kind of just, it's a snowball effect. I signed up with Angie's List. Angie's List was such an animal back then to push, you know, and build companies much different than it is today. It, it's not as so the same. So Angie's List uh, pretty much was our, both of our mothers of our businesses. Right. Where, and then she gave us up for adoption years later, but we both started about the same 2012, 2013. We're killing it. What is this? So all the Romeo Washington Bruce is a really close community, like I said. So this is a list of addresses that we've done in these cities organized by color. It's with the Landmark Pro and the Northgate, because that's pretty much the only thing we sell. We don't install too many okay. landmarks. That way they can kind of drive around and see it on people's houses and it helps. So people ask for like re almost referrals or something? Almost referrals. So these are all, you know, 80 to 150 square houses that around here that are just, you know. Okay ridiculous looking. As soon as the job sold, we put out yard signs, big monster ones like that. We have Romeo ones. Bulldogs are schools. So that's a yard sign that would go in Romeo, Washington, Bruce. Um, and then we have yard signs that would go out in the, you know, anywhere but the city where this is just not on here. You have different work, uh, yard signs for different areas? Yeah. Love it. Because like I said, Romeo is, you know, if we drive a mile down the road, there's a big billboard of mine and it's got the bulldog on it. It's all about our schools and our system and our community here. A lot of people say that it's very hard to start and people starting for leads, but your your first year, you, you said you did 975,000? It was 780, 780. 780, okay. Right. The first year, that's amazing. That's a solid number. Right. With you selling everything. Right. So. But again, I, it was like, it was like that perfect storm. We just got out of the recession. Everybody was, you know, all my mentors and investor people that I know were buying all these properties. You know, so we were doing all these jobs. We got hooked up with insurance companies that wanted us to do the job. Because when I did the job for subs, the companies would call, when I was a sub, the companies would call me for the hard, difficult shit. Like if there's a church with a 12-12 pitch, we're putting cool vent on or something like that, they'd call me to do that. So I had all these connections from people knowing that I was experienced and I could do jobs that most people couldn't take on and I can manage it without having any issues. So I created a reputation as a sub before I became a business owner and then it kind of snowballed into, plus you added on advertising, website, you know, stuff was a lot different back then. It is hard now, but I think if you just focus and grind it out, then I mean, it's focus. Well, yeah. one of the reasons we came here because a lot of guys who follow us, we have similar audiences, people come in and say, Dimitri, you have to meet Eric Green, you have to come to him. When did you start doing YouTube videos and why did you start doing YouTube videos? <laughs> I was just, I have a buddy that's into it and you know, he was like, you should make videos. People have to know your story. They have to know your life and, and what you do. So I was like, okay. And I was just used to being filmed with him. So okay. it just transferred into. And why did you stop then? Uh, <laughs> I just got overwhelmed with so many different things. I don't know. It was like, it just wasn't in my to-do list, on my daily to-do list. It was for a while and then it just wasn't. Comment below if you guys want Eric to resume his YouTube channel and keep creating content for you. <laughs> you have four kids. Apparently, everybody around me lately have a whole bunch of kids. You have four <laughs> kids. Tell me about your work-life balance and uh, how did it change over the years? So at first, it was grinded out. I mean, I worked seven days a week, sun up to sundown. I did, I did what I could. I spent rain days with them and in winter time with them. Um, it's like I was never home, but I, I, was, I was working. Now, I have a much better schedule. I take them to school every morning. I'm home by dinner most days. Um, on the weekends I'm spending with them. So uh, it's, it's much more important to me now, you know, and, and I'm able to. So it's developed over time too. Awesome. So, so you scale back and, and I can actually attest to that. Uh, we flew in last night and we wanted to meet in the morning. He's like, nope, dropping my girl to school and I'll be there at like 10 o'clock. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't appreciate uh, that you have not invited me to the gym in the morning. That's not nice of you, but... <laughs> right. Hey, anytime. Uh, what motivates you? Motivates? In business, personal. The process. I love the process. I love the journey. I love the accomplishment. I'm always say I'm built and engineered to crush it, to develop so and So you don't like, and... you don't like the moment when you're like achieved, done, made it? Like... 
well, I still don't think I've made it. I think I'm still a guppy in a big pond, you know? Um, so it's the process of growth and accumulating more and buying real estate and being around bigger players and taking, you know, bigger deals. Where at first you're at hundreds and then you're at thousands and ten thousands and hundred thousands and then you get to the seven figure, you know, so it's, it's that. It's awesome. that. And to do it so young and to teach and, and motivate and mentor other people is a driving force every day. What numbers do you track in your business? All of them. Everything. I mean, from so, call leads, where leads come from, to... Uh, what's your number one lead generation source right now? Angie's List, probably. Still. Angie's List still? Still. Just because we're so... After everything she's done to you, after she... I know. <laughs> she's still good to me. I mean, it's word of mouth, the storefront, and I mean, Angie's List, and in our community. We're in such a hometown community that it's... I mean, word here is worth everything. What's your closing rate? Um, on my stuff, Probably 60 to 80. I mean, I don't track the exact rate. Like, I don't go through. So I mean, that, yeah, that, that number is not that important in the game. Uh, what's your average job? 15,000. I would say that'd be a middle number. Okay. What's your uh, revenue for this year going to be? It's going to be, our accountant comes in next week, so I'll know better, but five. Maybe somewhere around five. five. And are you comfortable to talk about numbers? Uh, what's your net? Um, <laughs> is it 10% around? I mean, I, I try to net 28% per job. Like, that's the goal. That's probably gross, no? No. That's, you know, it's profit before you take into account of, like, marketing yeah, so and sales and it's stuff gross. like that. So your growth profit margin is about 28. Right. Okay. But do you know your net? I mean, it's going to be better than 15 i mean better than 15 because I, I i do it all i mean i'm here sure. i'm grinding i'm hustling so eric only has two sales guys i want you to think about this guy so two sales guys he has somebody who helps with the production and that's what blew me up like he he's so focused and he's so involved very old school doesn't have crm we're gonna sign him up for somebody <laughs> because i i can't like it makes me cry to see what he does i mean he does what i was doing three four years ago which is fine it's if you're involved and you control your business and process, totally fine. But three guys, five million dollars, and he did about uh, three million probably himself or so. Oh yeah. So yeah. no wonder. I mean, I'll he, do the bulk of it. Yeah, I believe you, your profit margin is probably where you said you are. So yeah. How much do you pay yourself on a regular basis? Like, do you, and how do you pay yourself? Do you pay yourself like a salary? And I know you reinvest a lot and back in your business. Right. But how do you distribute? Like, do you have certain amount you pay yourself, and everything else stays for growth, or? Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I take a I take a normal salary. It's based on a quarterly rate, um, so we'll review it and adjust it accordingly. And then everything else just who, stays. Who in the are we? Me and my CPA. Okay. So he'll come in, you know, usually monthly, but some at least at the end of every quarter, we'll okay. see where we're at, and we take a, you know, I follow all the IRS rules. So I'm very sure. clean. I'm very like everything in QuickBooks is very organized. The taxes are paid. So you pay yourself like every Friday or bi-weekly? Every, week, bi-weekly. Bi-weekly? Yeah. So it doesn't matter what you sell, what your commission is. It's a salary. It's not commission. No, nope. salary. You know, if you have $300,000 in account and you've sold everything you could sell, you still, number don't change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've been doing the same thing. Love it. Not yeah. many people do it that way, yeah. but I love it. No, to me, like, again, it's all about the growth. And, you know, I've, I've seen so many people be successful and then blow money. And, I mean, we talked about our past and where we came from, and I would never go back there. So, to me, it's like keeping everything in the business, reinvest in real estate, and then I refill Paramount. So, awesome. it's, 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 the, it's the growth generator. Have you ever fall off the roof? Yes. No. Okay. Uh, we got I've camera. never <laughs> fell off the roof, but I fell off a two-story ladder. The ladder broke in half. I fell down a pick. Uh, a scaffolding hit me in the face. I had to get, oh, so wow. I had to side of my face is titanium. Oh, wow. because really? So I fell in a pile of um, trash, nails and stuff, you know, knocked me out cold because the pick hit me in the face. Oh, wow. And then I'm not a hospital type guy. So the ambulance <laughs> came and they were like, put me in a stretcher, trying to put me in a neck brace. And I just was like fighting them and had to sign Ooh. off. And my, <laughs> my wife like pulls up, like, we're going to the hospital. Like, All right. Here. When was that? 2010. Oh, wow. What, what happened on the ladder? Like, is it just bad ladder or are you trying yeah, to lift think, five I shingles? Mean, <laughs> there, was tw- there were two 28-foot little giants. Okay. And then there was a pla- uh, scaffolding. And we loaded two square on each ladder jack. Stupid. <laughs> so I went to, like, climb up and over, and it just clicked. You know, and that, that was it. Everything came down. How did you recover? Was it a big deal? Was it- I mean, it was, yeah. I mean, the guys that I worked for just took care of it, you know. I mean, I had, like, a, 
of fractured wrists. So what I did was I taped, and if you guys, you guys can take this, I taped a pry bar because it has that curve so that I could hold a nail gun because I couldn't hold the weight of a nail gun with my wrist. So I taped a uh, pry bar to my hand so it held my hand like this <laughs> so I could still nail shingles. I just needed somebody to feed me. <laughs> so I'd be up there shingling still, you know. Talking like, about hardcore die hard, tips. <laughs> Speaking of OSHA, do you always wear harness when you go on a roof? Everybody has harness and they have OSHA compliant harness systems. No, they, and we do have, you go? Like I, I've seen your videos. You oh like, never. <laughs> Why? I, I, I'm comfortable doing what I do, and I won't do anything I'm not comfortable with. So I'm I'm very open about that. I don't wear cougar paws. I've I've been climbing these forever. Not that I'm invisible, but I just know what I can climb and what I can't climb. When I'm climbing, I know where there's valleys and pipe collars, and I know everything that's around me to keep me safe. So love it, love it. I'm the same way. I mean, yeah. I, can, I can do. I, I can, I can walk in my hands. Yeah. And I feel, um, what's the hardest thing in a roofing business? I mean, balancing the almighty 50 customers at one time. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's the hardest thing for every in any service business. I don't think it's just roofing. I mean, it's not communication as much. It's just keeping all the ships floating, everything in sync. You know, across the board. This person happy. This person happy. We're calling. We're late. We're early. Proposal was an hour late. I mean, it's and keeping that you know, tranquility throughout the businesses. Why did you decide to teach other roofers trade secrets? Because I just feel like if I can help anybody, motivate anybody, mentor anybody, and help them skip a step or put belief that they can do it because of where I came from and what I've been able to do, that I believe that, you know, I should give back. When I was building my company and still building my company now, we've talked about it. Like I'm looking for, I'm still learning. You're teaching me things. I'm looking at, I'm not like, oh, I already know that. Like I want to know it all. But if I can help anybody, you know, coming from, places and get to the next place then that's you know that's the motivation that i you know I'll, I'll, I'll help what advice you would give to someone who just getting started and bring you in the market like was sub yesterday and today they decided to get an llc and stick with it don't back up don't back off don't back up stick with it and grind it out there's going to be hard times you're going to screw shit up you're going to break stuff there's stuff that you don't know you got to just stick to it and be honest with your word that's number one pay your guys on time Make your guys want to work for you, build your teams, and just, I mean, you got to stick it out. If you broke something, just pay for it. I mean, whatever you do, it's all about the referrals and it's all about the um, communication. You got to grind it out. You got to stay focused. Do you do repairs? Yes, sir. A lot? Yep. Why do you do repairs? A lot of roofers don't. Because it's, I mean, the margin on a roof versus repairs is, you know, repairs is so much more. And not many people do them, so it's a niche market. If you have a guy that you can trust that can do them, I know there's some companies that just do repairs. They don't even do full roofs. I agree. No, oh, I love repairs too. Who or what influenced you the most in the roofing business? Like, what's your motivation? Who who gets influence on in you? Like, do you have mentors? You mentioned mentors. Yeah, I have I, I have mentors that I've, uh, you know, pretty much more in like the real estate. Like when I invest in and in do like real estate development kind of things. Um, as far as roofing, it's just me. It's my challenge. It's my. It's what I love. I've grown up like with tar under my fingernails. Like I know, I've roofed, I've shingled till my fingertips bled and had to soak them in Vaseline while I sleep. Like I know what it feels like. <laughs> I've grinded it out. So to just keep building and just build this, you know, company that his values are high and honest and integrity is in everything's under one spot is that's what motivates me. What shingles do you install and why? Uh, Certainty, hundred um, percent, because I've installed for. 11 years, I know every manufacturer, I've installed it, I've held it, I've worked with it. Um, I feel the certainty shingles are the best. I've installed them for years now through storms. I've seen how they reacted and the reps awesome. The customer service is great. Our rebates are great. Our five-star um, warranty program for a select shingle master when you get to the top of the list is outstanding. Um, their warranty, they stand by it. The reps are local. You can call them if a customer has a problem the reps will come right out and take care of it. And they, they have many times, so I would 100% would stand by it. Awesome. Any other shingle manufacturer you're okay, you would recommend or? Yeah, Owens know Corning, I, I think Owens Corning is a great shingle. It's, it's, if they can't find a color and certainty that they like, we always push them towards an OC. Um, besides that, I really wouldn't install anything else. The last question I have for you to finish it off, are you gonna resume your YouTube channel? Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I got this guy, man, it's cool. I mean, he's been a motivation all day. Like, check this out, check this out. I'm like, dude, that's sweet. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Comment below if you would like 
um, to see Eric at our roof conference, uh, hear more from him. We're inviting him to participate, do a little breakout session so he can share his experience. You can learn from a guy who really made it and lives true American dream, have amazing life balance, you know, takes care of the family, takes care of the business, and true admiration in this business. All right, man, thank you so much. Thank We're going to so head much, out. Man. Appreciate it. It's all I have for you guys for today. If you're the homeowner in Michigan, Detroit area, I highly recommend Paramount and Eric Arena personally, amazing, really conservative guy who takes care of his clients. If you're the contractor and you feel like you're a market leader and you're a good roofing company and you want us to come to you, comment below, message me. My cell phone is 612-558-4881. I would like to hear from you. I would like to come to you and feature you and your company on our YouTube channel. If you're the homeowner and you're looking for a trusted contractor in your area, hit us as well and we'll connect you with somebody trustworthy in your area. I'll see you guys in the next video.